Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial about the Particle Playground. I'm Luisa Winters. All right, let's get us started. Here in After Effects, go ahead and create a new composition. Control or Command N. And HD is good. I'm just going to name it Particles. And there you have it. Now let's create a solid. Control or Command Y. And any color will do. I'm going to also name the solid particles. And there you go. Now, with a layer selected, go to Effect, Simulation, Particle Playground. And as soon as you start playing the timeline, you're going to see the particles there in the middle of the screen. All right, these particles are being created by a generator called the Canon. And you can see it here in the Effect Controls panel. I'm going to expand Canon. Let's go ahead and talk about some of these things. The first thing that we have here is position. That is position of what is generating the particles, right? So we can keyframe this. We can even create a mask, copy the mask, and then paste it here. Let's go ahead and do that. So Control or Command Y so that we have a place to put the mask. And now I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm simply going to click, click and drag click and click and drag like yay all right now we can select that layer press m for mask and we can copy the mask path all right just copy that and now you can delete the layer because we don't need it anymore all right i want to keyframe this at the beginning of the composition so i move the playhead all the way to the beginning now I can keyframe position and I can press the letter U so that I see the property right here in the timeline. So without moving anything, all I'm going to do is paste Control or Command V. And there you go. Now I have the position of the emitter of the particles following that path that I created before. And I can make it last even longer. These are keyframes that rove in time. So that's an easy thing to do. Just click and drag the first or last one, and there you have it. Now, this is what we have so far. And granted, it's not much because, well, the particles are red. They're not that many. And, you know, but we have something. The next thing I want to talk about is the barrel radius. This is how big the place where the particles are being born from is. I'm just going to change this to a small number, maybe even a five, and that's it. I'm not going to keyframe it or anything like that. Now, particles per second, I am at 60. I want a lot, a lot more. So, in fact, I'm going to change this to 10,000. And now if I play it, this is what we have. Now you can see it, right? All righty. The next thing that we have is the direction of the particles. In other words, where are the particles going, right? And by default, they're going up. I usually like adding a wiggle expression to this property. So press and hold Alt or Option if you are on the Mac. And now let's click on the stopwatch for direction. And in the timeline, we can type wiggle, open parentheses, two, as in two times per second, comma, and I'll make it go 120, as in 120 degrees. Don't forget that wiggle expressions are controlled by two values. How often, right, frequency, that's the first number, and how much, that's magnitude. So how much what? Well, it depends on what you are adding the wiggle to. In this case, it's direction that's measured in degrees, so it's how many degrees. And this is what we have so far. Pretty cool. All right. The next thing is the direction random spread. I'm going to make this a little bit wider so that you can uh, read it. And right now it's at 20. This is a value of randomness that is assigned to the direction and then later on to the velocity of our particles. Uh, because if they all go exactly in the same direction, then it just looks like a line, right? So it's a degree of randomness, and we can increase it, and I will increase it. 
to more. That way we have the particles going in a more different ways. And that's already looking pretty organic. Now, velocity, this is how fast they're going, right? So I think 130 is good. I'm going to give it a little bit higher value. So maybe a 60 on the velocity random spread. And let's see if that made any difference. Oh, it sure did. I am digging that. That's pretty good. Uh, then we have the color. I'm going to change these to white. And then the particle radius. That's how big each and every particle is. I'm going to change this value to a four. That way our particles are much larger. You can keyframe these values. For example, the particles can start white and then say here at around four seconds, they can be gold, right? Something like that. And now gradually, the particles, as they are being born, are going to change color. And that's pretty neat. All right. Now I want to move all the way to gravity, right? Because uh, particles are being affected by the pool of gravity. So if I uh, uh, expand this, you see that the gravity force is going at 120. If I change this to a much lower value, say a 50, notice that the particles are still going to fall down, but not as quickly. See how they remain floating for that much longer? All right, and this is pretty good. About the last thing that I want to do, I'm going to uh, make it coincide with the last keyframe of position. I want to keyframe the particles per second so that it goes from 10,000 to zero real fast. And this is what I have so far. So the next thing is that I want to talk about the wall, and that's this property right here. And this is a boundary that we can create so that it contains the particles. So I'm just going to create a mask with a pen tool, select the layer, and then I'm just going to click twice. And I'm going to use this mask as the wall. All right. So here we go on the wall boundary. I'm just going to say mask one. And now you're going to see that some of the particles, not all, are going to bounce from that wall. And the reason that not all particles are bouncing from the wall is because some of them were born outside of the boundaries of the wall. So the actual position goes underneath where the wall is, all right? So I'm just going to say none because I'm not interested in having a wall, but I did want to show that to you. The next thing that we have here is the layer map. So we can make our particles look like whatever we want. Let me give you this example. I'm going to draw a star with a star tool. I don't want a stroke and I want and I want it to be yellow, right? So actually not a gradient. I want a solid color. And I want it to be yellow. And this is good. And now I'm simply going to draw it. I'm not going to draw it super big, but there it is. I'm going to select the layer. And now I'm going to double click on the anchor point tool, pressing the control key. So that anchor point centers on that star. All right. I'm just going to rename this star. And now going to my particles layer, I'm going to tell uh, the effect that the layer is going to be the star layer. And now because I have so many particles, this is taking a while to render. So I'm going to have less particles. All right. So I'm going to select the particles, press the letter U. And now I'm going to go to the particles per second. And I'm going to reduce that 10,000 to say 500. I'm also going to reduce the scale of the star. 
And now the particles are going to look more like magic dust or whatever you want to call it, right? And I'm going to stop it here. And this is what we have so far. And that's kind of cool. Now, all the properties that we have here in the particle playground would be things like the persistent and the ephemeral uh, property mapper. And what I really want to do is that I want to uh, use these properties to change the properties of the particles. And for that, I'm going to need a gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know what, I'm going to create a gradient here. So I'm going to create a solid. I'm going to call it gradient. And now I'm going to add an effect to it. So effect, generate, and I'm going to use fractal. And there it is. Uh, it can be anything. It could be Julia, Julia invert. Uh, equation, we can change the equation, and uh, let's change the offset here a little bit, and let's also change the color, so the hue, I want to, yeah, I think this is good, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that, now I'm going to add an effect for color correction and I'm going to add a black and white effect and also another one for levels. And here it is. I'm going to change the input levels maybe to about that. And this is good. I'm also going to add a blur. So a Gaussian blur, I think, will do. And I'll blur it to about yay. I'm not going to repeat the edge pixels, so this is good. And I think this is good. Maybe I'm going to change this brightness a little bit more. To about yay. I'm digging that. Okay. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pre-compose this and I'm going to call it, uh, yeah, gradient pre-comp is good. I'm going to move all of the attributes into the new composition and that's going to be my gradient. I'm going to make it invisible. Now I'm going to go to my particles and I'm going to go to the persistent property mapper and it's going to say use layer as a map. I'm going to use the gradient comp one and now it's going to map the red two say, scale. And now, depending on what is darker and what is brighter, things are going to become bigger or smaller. And don't forget that the gradient can be a video that can move. So look, the minimum value will be zero. The maximum value will be one. So I'm going to put the minimum value to one and the maximum value to five. And that's going to make a difference now. And each and every particle is going to be slightly different. I'm going to change this to uh, an eighth. I'm going to say render every four pixels. And this should, uh, this should go a little bit faster now. Now I'm going to map the green to. No, I'll do it to the opacity. Why not? And because this is a grayscale, um, the values for red, green, and blue will all be identical. So I'm going to put the opacity at 0.5 for minimum and for maximum at 1. And now the opacity of the, the particles is changing according to the gradient. Finally, I'm going to map blue to mass. And I'll do a 1 here for minimum and a 5 for maximum. And this is what I have.
All right. I just want to end this tutorial by telling you, do look at these, uh, all of these properties in the particle playground, because remember, th they don't have to be stars. They could be letters. They could be logos. They could be water drops. So you can create uh, rain. You can create snow. You can create anything you want. And uh, things start becoming really, really interesting when not all of the particles are exactly alike. And you are in full control of that by using the persistent and the ephemeral uh, property mapper and tying that to a gradient. And remember, the gradient can move. All right, this brings us to the end of this short tutorial about the particle playground. I'm Luisa Winters. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.